Hi, my name is Mrs O'Neill. I'll be talking to you today about the options available in the Modern Languages faculty. Some of the languages uh, that are taught in Cumberland Academy, first of all, is our French, um, which is our core language that most pupils have been studying since primary school and you'll be continuing on studying your French to at least the end of third year where you can opt in to then complete a national qualification with a French. On top of that you can choose to study either German or Spanish and that would mean that you could be doing even all three if you decided to do that. Later on we have taster courses further up the school for our senior phase pupils in Russian and Japanese and of course that's our affiliation with the um, Japanese visitors that come in on a Monday afternoon at lunchtime for the Japanese club. Some of the reasons why we study languages, um, these are more just of general interest ones. However, we're more concerned with um, our employability. We always do very, very well by our pupils and we always get great sets of results across the three languages and it's helped a number of our pupils go on and study languages at university or meet, help to meet their requirements for entry into the university course we've got there. Um, our main reason why we would be looking at this. Some of our facts with pupils coming out of uh, courses across the United Kingdom. Um, 2019, 60% of modern languages graduates were in employment within six months of graduating, which is a, a great achievement there. And 13% of those getting their first job outside the UK. Some of the usual jobs that we think of um, associated with studying modern languages. However, ones like law and events organisation as well, um, civil service, marketing, public relations, even pharmaceutical companies look to have graduates that can speak a foreign language. And journalism, media, transport distribution and even now your website. And as much as we love Cumbernauld, imagine the view from the office if it was like this. So you can, once you have languages, you can work in those countries that you've studied the language for as well. A wee bit of general information here. Some are celebrities that speak more than one language, which is quite interesting to see big celebrities and how the different languages that they have uh, associated with them and have learned and the same with our female celebrities. So we very much hope that you would think about studying modern languages and coming in and working hard to achieve and meet some of the great results that we've had over the years. Um, and if you have any more questions, you can pop up break times or lunch times and come along and see me. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Humanities Faculty S2 Options Information for 2022. My name is Mr O'Rourke and I am the Faculty Principal Teacher for Humanities at Cumbernauld Academy. And the aim of this short presentation is to give pupils and parents some information about the subjects that we are offering in the humanities faculty and hopefully this will help pupils when they're choosing their subjects moving into S3. The humanities faculty offers three subjects which you can see on the slide and these are geography, history and modern studies and pupils at Cumberland Academy can choose two of these subjects to study and follow moving into S3. The first subject I'd like to talk about is geography. And what is geography? Geography is a study that develops people's understanding of many important issues impacting our changing world today, involving both human interactions and physical processes. 
And geography helps foster positive lifelong attitudes towards environmental stewardship, sustainability and global citizenship. Our S3 Geography course allows pupils to study the following units. Human environments, which includes population and development, differences and changes throughout the world. Urban issues and changes, with case studies of Glasgow and Mumbai. Farming and countryside land use issues and changes, with case studies in the UK and India. In physical environments, Pupils learn how uh, river and limestone landscapes, both above and below ground, are formed by the actions of moving water and weathering. How humans make use of, impact on and manage these landscapes. And why we get weather we do in the UK and how it impacts us. And in global issues, pupils will study two of the following. Health, which the causes, impacts, control methods of selected diseases. For example, malaria, heart disease and HIV AIDS. Natural hazards, earthquakes, volcanoes, tropical storms. And finally, tourism, looking at mass tourism and ecotourism. There are many skills developed in geography. This topical and engaging course helps pupils build vital geographical skills, as well as transferable literacy, numeracy and ICT skills such as Literacy, applying knowledge and understanding to describe, explain, give reasons for, develop arguments for and against an issue. Numeracy, analysing numerical and graphical information. Map skills, reading, identifying, interpreting and evaluating. Field work, data collection, presentation and evaluation skills. And research and ICT skills, gathering and processing information. Geography develops knowledge and transferable skills useful in a wide range of careers related to environmental sciences, environmental law, climate change analysts, civil engineering, tourism and recreation, weather forecasting meteorology, international aid, development, surveying, planning and architecture, teaching, education, transport services and management, marketing and design, conservation, land management and agriculture, civil service, geophysics and geology. Our second subject that we offer in the humanities faculty is history. And what is history? The study of history introduces pupils to knowledge and understanding of the past through the study of Scottish, British, European and world topics. This course is designed for pupils who are interested in developing a detailed understanding of historical events. In the S3 history course, pupils study the following topics in S3 and S4. The Scottish topic, the era of the Great War, 1900 to 1928. Pupils learn about Scots in the Western Front, the impact on society and culture, impact on industry and economy, and impact on politics. In the British topic, pupils study the Atlantic slave trade from 1770 to 1807, and they learn about the triangular trade, Britain and the Caribbean, the captors' experience in slave resistance, and the abolitionist campaigns. And in the European world topic, pupils learn about Hitler and Nazi Germany between 1919 and 1939, and they look at Weimar Germany, Nazi rise to power, Nazi control, and Nazi social and economic policies. The exciting and dynamic history course develops a number of important skills, including developing and applying skills, knowledge, and understanding across contexts from Scottish, British, European, and world history, evaluating the origin, purpose, content, and or context of historical sources, evaluating the impact of historical developments, presenting information in a structured manner, evaluating the factors contributing to historical developments, drawing reasoned conclusions supported by evidence with limited guidance, researching and analysing historical information, and developing a detailed and accurate knowledge and understanding 
of historical themes and events in Scottish, British, European and world contexts. Related careers in history include humanities, social sciences, law and languages, education, law, management, public administration. And our third subject on offer in the humanities faculty is modern studies. And what is modern studies? The course develops people's knowledge and understanding of contemporary political and social issues. The course is designed for pupils who wish to achieve a greater understanding of society and their place in it. Pupils who study modern studies will study the following areas in S3 and S4. Social issues, crime and law. Pupils will look at what is crime, the causes and impact of crime, efforts to tackle crime and the criminal justice system in Scotland. Pupils will also look at world power, which is the USA, and they'll look at the political system, the influence of America on other countries, social and economic issues, and the effectiveness of attempts to try and tackle the social and economic issues. And finally, pupils will study democracy in Scotland. They will look at representation, electoral systems, participation, influence, and power and decision making. In modern studies, a range of research and information handling skills are developed, including evaluating information evidence in order to support and oppose a view, making decisions and drawing conclusions, constructing detailed arguments, and communicating views, opinions, decisions, and conclusions based on evidence. There are a number of related careers associated with modern studies. These include politics, sociology, international relations, law and or other social science courses, journalism and the media, civil and public, public service, social work and human relations. Some famous people who have modern studies related degrees include Michelle Obama, Jerry Springer, Rebel Wilson, James Blunt and Gerard Butler. I hope this information helps you to make an informed decision about which humanities subjects to choose moving into S3. And I'd like to thank you for listening and good luck when making your options choices. Hello, it's Mrs Hall here. I'm just going to give you a short presentation about S3 English. As you go into S3, you'll find it's pretty similar to what you've already experienced in English through S1 and S2. You'll be given the opportunity to take part in different tasks to practice your reading, your writing, your listening and your talking skills. Um, most pupils find that they're working at sort of third and fourth level by the end of S3. That's obviously different for different pupils. And obviously some pupils find that they're stronger in one element compared to the other. We're all very different. But basically in S3, you'll get the opportunity to practice all of those skills in all of those areas. So just like in S1 and S2, you'll be undertaking a range of different reading tasks. So you'll see in the slide here, we've got some class novels that we maybe would study in S3. Um, you'll be reading some short stories. You'll be reading newspaper articles, drama scripts plays, um, non-fiction texts, poetry, um, and you'll be watching things like um, films and programmes. All of these texts give you a chance to read and develop your reading and analysing and understanding skills. You'll also get uh, the opportunity to sort of read for pleasure and get a choice of what it is you like to read too. Uh, so some teachers in the English department have a class library and of course there's you, we have the school library that you'll have the opportunity to visit. You will also have the opportunity to write in a, in a lot of different ways. Um, so for example, we can write in a creative way. So you, you will have the opportunity to write short stories, poetry, scripts, maybe personal writing. Uh, you'll also get the chance to write essays based on what you've been reading, just to, to show your understanding. This is a really important skill to practice, especially going into 
um, S3, thinking about going into S4, where in the exam you have to write essays. And also you'll get to try some more functional pieces of writing. So, for example, reports, letters, articles, that sort of thing. All of these uh, types of writing combine to help you practice your literacy skills and improve your writing. As part of your English studies in S3, you'll also be working on your talking and listening skills. And again, there are lots of different types of activities that you'll undertake to do this. Um, so, for example, your teacher might ask you to do a presentation or a solo talk. They might ask you to take part in a group discussion. You'll be taking part in class discussions. Um, in terms of listening, so obviously you listen carefully to each other in talks and listen to what your teacher says, but you'll also kind of be assessed formally in your listening skills through like maybe listening to an extract or an article and then being asked questions on it. So there's lots of different ways that you'll be practicing those talking and listening skills. The reason that you have to do English is because it is such an important subject in terms of your literacy skills. Um, in life, you need to be able to communicate effectively, whether that's through talking or through your written work. Um, when you're, you're moving on beyond the school place, you need to be able to read, write, talk and listen effectively to, to sort of be successful in different, in different um, areas. So if, even if you're going into a workplace, no matter the kind of workplace, you still need to be able to read and understand information and communicate clearly. Or if you're planning to go to university or to college, English is a subject that's really core to that and something that you need to, you need to work on. Throughout your time in S3, your teacher will be looking at how you perform in the different elements in reading and writing and talking and listening. And they'll give you a range of tasks to sort of determine how well you're doing in each of those areas. Generally, there are a few different ways you can work on um, these skills. So absolutely trying to read as much as possible at home and as widely as possible, different kinds of uh, texts. Um, thinking about your spelling, punctuation and grammar, try and work on your writing, make sure you're reading over your written work. Finally, taking on board um, the, the feedback that your teacher gives you and how to improve after each piece or each um, task that you do, your teacher will be giving you next steps. So listen to those next steps carefully and you will excel in English. Hi everybody and welcome to the Faculty of Performance S2 into S3 options. Uh, and what I'm going to do is run through um, each of the departments and the subjects that they offer. So our three departments are music, uh, drama and PE. Um, so we'll start with music and within music you've got the option to choose uh, music itself or music technology. So a quick run down each of these. So for music, as we would know it in terms of performing, um, you get three lessons per week. That will be a common theme. Um, two periods of that will be practical. You will then focus on um, a, a two instruments in particular. Um, you'll look at a variety of pieces, different styles. Um, there will be group performances and hopefully um, the possibility of concerts and recordings. Uh, let's hope once COVID's out of the way that we get back to, to these things. Uh, there will be one period a week where we focus on understanding music, which essentially is the, the written part of it. Uh, within understanding music, then, you have um, these main areas, main concepts. Um, as you can see, um, rock and pop, urban genres, blues, ragtimes and jazz, Scottish music, world music, historical styles, and um, there is an element of composition. Now, that has been missing over or has been removed over the last couple of years, but it may well um, come back in from SQA. Um, so we need to make you aware of that. So for that, um, songwriting, arranging, using um, the software in school, um, and then breaking down music into its component parts. For music tech or music technology, and in S2, you should have had a, an experience of that using the Max, maybe Garage Band on there. Um, it is pretty much a practical course. Um, 
And within that, then you have the opportunity to use um, the equipment, both in the classrooms and um, in the recording studio. Um, so as you can see, um, you use a range of microphones, mixing desks, the audio interfaces, speakers and amplifiers. The content, um, gain skills using pro level software to write, record, edit and mix your music. Be able to recognise and use a range of effects to shape your recordings. Um, develop your own ability to plan, organise and lead your own projects. Gain an understanding of the multitude of roles within the music and creative industries. And you can see from the picture um, that is our students using the recording studio. So um, the, the room in the back is where the girls are performing. And then um, at front on the desk um, are the girls recording. So overall, uh, main skills, there's a, a, a variety there. I'm not going to run through them all, um, but you can see that um, taking either music performance or music tech um, will develop your skills. Um, and you should be able to take both of them if you wish to do so. So we slide on some careers, both through music and also through music Take, and I'll let you come back to that one. Um, for either of the music courses, speak to your teacher. So, uh, Mr. McMillan, Mr. Phillips, Miss Duncan, Miss Clucky, or Miss Gannon, and they can advise you some more. Okay, so for PE, um, Basically, practical performance, um, we investigate the factors which impact on performance, mental, emotional, social and physical factors. You will perform in a variety of activities. Um, these activities include football, basketball, volleyball, table tennis, netball, badminton, gymnastics, trampolining. Most of the time, uh, the classes are mixed ability and also mixed sex. Um, and the activities that are there, um, you might not do them all. Um, it'll depend um, sometimes of who you are timetabled against, but you will certainly get um, at least six of the eight that are there. So again, it's the three periods a week. Um, now, I have to say, again, it will be pretty much practical, but um, you will work in the classroom at some point every week. Okay, so um, if you're choosing PE, I am delighted at that, but you need to be well aware that there is written work to do. So um, please choose, but remember that. You will get homework as well. Sometimes it may be a little bit busier than others, um, and you must also remember your PE kit. The assessment um, will look at the factors that impact performance. There'll be class logbooks, there will be homework, there'll be an end of unit test as well as an end of year test. Um, that combined with your practical performance um, will provide uh, um, an overall grade for fourth year. Okay, and again, some of the skills you'll learn, the ability to analyse yours and other performances, um, understanding how to develop your performance, and then in terms of the actual performance itself, improving skills, tactics, fluency, and consistency in a number of different activities. It does provide a base for S4. Um, should you choose to move to, um, to take PE in S4, then um, depending on your um, overall performance in S3, you'll either move into National 4 or National 5. I should say for each of the slides uh, and each of the um, departments, if you follow Cumberland Academy Performance Faculty, um, you will see a variety of, um, of performances and um, previous um, activities um, that give you a wee flavour of what exactly goes on in there. Okay, and then finally, uh, for drama, 
So, provides opportunities for learners to be inspired and challenged by exploring dramatic ideas in creating and appreciating drama. Um, again, very much practical, focuses on the development of performance skills, sounds very much like PE, sounds very much like music, that's why this is the performance faculty. Um, they'll experiment with straightforward acting, directing and theatre production skills and learn how to apply them in performance. Um, the pupils will work on topics designed to enhance skill, such as voice, movement, characterisation and role play. Uh, this year, the third year class performed the full pantomime to the primary schools, and that has been really successful. Um, so much so that I think we're going to do that from now on. So in January, um, the the S3 class just there have performed to uh, the primaries for, for five days. Each of the associated primaries have come up and watched the performance. Again, assessment. Um, you can see there's a number of different um, assessments for you in drama. Um, and again, homework is relevant. Um, it's not going to be lots. But um, you still have to be aware that there will be a written element to drama. Welcome to the Business IT and Computing Science Option Choices. Within our faculty, we have three choices that you can take from second year into S3, and that is Admin and IT, Business Management and Computing Science. However, at the, the end of this presentation, if you're still unsure which one or a number of subjects that you'd like to take, please speak to your teacher. So you can either speak to myself, Mrs Johnston, Miss Garrick, Mrs Donald, Miss Habib or Miss McGarry. And remember, you can choose any combination of our subjects in your option choices and some pupils in previous years have picked all three. So let's get started. Our first option available to you is admin and IT. And so you need to ask, for your, ask yourself, is this a subject for me? Well, Admin and IT are skill, provide skills that are required for every single job. And it allows you to learn skills that you can use throughout your school life and other subjects. And that's why it's one of those really important subjects which is classed as a skills for life, learning and work subject. So what will you learn in the course? Well, You'll learn how to use a variety of ICT applications and how to be able to use it effectively to carry out tasks that you would be required to do in any form of business. And you'll be able to get an understanding of how IT tasks are vital to the effective working relationships within an organisation, understanding the appreci and appreciate customer care, as well as finally develop all those skills that you're required to organise any type of event. So what are the skills we actually teach? Well, you can see from the left hand side that we teach all the IT skills that would be required to carry out any type of job. And you can use these skills in other subjects and also in your chosen, chosen career route. So you'd be developing and applying your IT skills, developing knowledge and understanding of the role of admin, evaluating the impact of the role of admin and being able to present information in a professional manner once you have evaluated and researched what is good information. Our second option is computing science and again is it for you? So think about what you want to do when you leave school. What are you interested in? Do you enjoy computing programming which you have got a taster of in S2? Database administrator, database designer, we've already covered that and also games designers and testers, which is always a really, really popular choice. Well, if any of those things are what you're interested in, computing science may be the subject for you. So these are what you cover in third year. So you'll be learn to design computer programs using Python programming language. You will design and create websites using HTML, again, building on your skills from S2. Design creative test databases as well as designing, creating and testing PowerPoints. So what skills will you develop? Well, you've got your computational thinking skills, 
You'll be able to understand key concepts and processes involved in computing science and your analysis and problem solving skills as well as numeracy. So these are all areas in which you can take into other parts of your school subjects. Finally, we've got business management. And again, are you interested in entrepreneurship? Are you creative? Are you innovative? Do you see how you can improve upon products, upon gaps in the market and so on? So if you're interested in entering the world of business, to work in marketing, sales, customer service, HR, product development and design, manufacturing, accountancy. If you're interested in any of those areas, either as owning your own business or as a manager and an employee, business management is a really good subject to have. These are the skills that you'll learn in the course. So you'll develop your entrepreneurial skills. You've got your decision making skills. So you'll be able to decide what type of product you're going to make and sell how to advertise and promote your products, find out how customers tell us what they want us to make and sell through market research, as well as those core skills such as communication, negotiation skills, numeracy and literacy skills. So, there's our three options available to you from S2 into S3. If you're still not sure, you'll see here uh, you, these are the teachers you should ask about your subject that you're interested in. If it's for admin and IT or business management, it's either myself, Mrs Johnston, Miss McGarry or Miss Habib. And if you're interested in computing science, Miss Carrick, Mrs Donald. And again, you can come and see me, Mrs Johnston. And we're round about up in our classrooms or in the staff room. So anytime you want to have a wee chat about it, just please pop in and see us. Thank you. Hi folks, Mr Lucas from the Design Faculty here to give you a brief run through of the subject choices available to you within the Design Faculty when you are selecting your options for the courses in S3. As you'll no doubt be aware from your experiences so far, the Design Faculty provides a large number of options to choose from at this stage of your school career. These options can sometimes be quite daunting and there's a lot to consider when you're making decisions, but for that reason it's important to think about picking subjects that you enjoy, subjects that you consider yourself to be good at and subjects that you have an interest in that might help you towards a particular career or a particular direction after school if you know what you want to do already. Again, some of you may be aware that within the design faculty we have five option choices to choose from when moving from S2 into S3. These are graphic communication, practical woodwork, and design and manufacture, all of which are subjects within the technical department. Within home economics, we have hospitality, practical cookery, and with art and design, we've obviously got art and design. Now, normally at options afternoon, I would spend a bit more time going through each of these subject areas in more detail, but the following slides give you a small insight into what each subject entails and gives an idea of why you might want to continue studying these next year. So first up within graphic communication, what we look to do is develop our skills across two key areas. These are manual hand-drawn graphics, um, encompassing sketching, drawn board work and rendering, and computer-generated graphics focusing on graphic design, desktop publishing, and 3D modeling. Within technical this year, you'll have had experience of all of these at some stage in S1 and S2, and shown here are some of the skills that you can expect to develop in S3 should you continue to study the subject. The second subject that we offer in S3 within technical and probably the most popular subject choice is practical woodwork. This course itself is fairly self-explanatory and in S3 we're looking to develop your skills and confidence using bench tools, fixed workshop machinery and power tools through the creation of three or four different projects throughout the year. Ultimately, in S3, we're looking to develop your skills to a level where we can make a smooth transition in S4 to National 4 or National 5 and ensure that you're able to read drawings, work safely and make artefacts to fine tolerances in line with SQA specifications. The final offering within technical is design and manufacture. Design and manufacture is a kind of hybrid of graphics and practical woodwork, where instead of manufacturing the same product as everyone in the class, 
you get to design and manufacture your own version of a product, whilst learning about the different stages of the design process and working with other materials such as metal, plastic and styrofoam. Design and manufacture requires time both in and out of the workshop, focusing on research, sketching, model making and ultimately creating products generated from your own ideas and concepts. Within the Home Economics Department, we offer hospitality, practical cookery. And again, this is a subject that is fairly self-explanatory. Throughout this course, the HA team provides you with the skills and resources that enable you to plan, prepare and cook various dishes from around the world, whilst developing your practical cooking skills that will hopefully serve you for the rest of your life. In addition to cooking and hospitality, we make sure to provide you guys with the most up-to-date dietary, health and nutrition advice that will allow you to make more informed choices about the foods that you eat and how they can fit into a healthy and balanced lifestyle. Finally, our last option within the design faculty comes from Art and Design. In S3 Art and Design, we're looking to increase your experiences and skill set across both expressive work and design work. These two areas are the main focus of study in S4, and in S3, we're looking to give you as much experience with different media, be that paints, pastels, clay, and lots more, and expose you to various techniques and processes within art and design that will allow you to smoothly transition to National 4 or National 5 next year. The nature of the art and design course means that your time in class will give the opportunity to experience multiple different forms of art, be that research, computer-generated designs, textiles, 2D and 3D art, all with a focus on improving your skill set within these. So that concludes a very brief overview of what we offer within the design faculty at this stage. And I'd like to think that throughout the faculty, we have something somewhere for everyone. Remember that within design, we are a largely practical based faculty, which means hands-on activities using real objects and materials to develop your knowledge and understanding. Hopefully this presentation has been useful to you. And if you have any further questions or queries, feel free to come along and see me or any of the fantastic staff that we have in the design faculty.